Okay guys, here we go. Today I'm going to teach you how to uh, create an Android application that will receive push notifications from Parse.com. So if you've never heard of Parse.com, uh, it's a, an online, uh, basically a back-end server that allows you to use push notifications and will store some objects for you among uh, a couple other couple other really cool features. Um, today we're going to talk about the push notifications. Um, in order to do this you really need to know about broadcast receivers on Android. So if you don't know what a broadcast receiver is or how to use it, I recommend first you to learn about broadcast receivers and to do that you can look at this other video that I've published here, a uh, tutorial on broadcast receivers. So once you have a good idea of what those are, how to use them, come back here and we'll teach you about the push notifications from Parse. Um, so in order to use parse.com, you have to sign up for an account. I've got some screenshots here to help you with that. Um, there's a sign up button in the upper right hand corner and just some basic information, name, email, password. I'm sure you guys know how to sign up to, for a service, so I'm not going to go too far into this. Uh, type the name of your application, choose individual developer. Once you get um, uh, signed up and logged in you should see a page that looks something like this. It might be a little bit different The screenshots kind of old, but it should be pretty close to this. You want to click the download our SDKs and Then you want the Android SDK and again the screenshots a little bit old So these version numbers will be different um, at the time of this recording 1.5 is the current version uh, But just pick whatever whatever version is there when you're um, doing this you should get a download from that inside a zip folder. Go ahead and unzip it. You should see some things like this. Uh, the jar file is what's going to be most important. And then you should also get taken to uh, this getting started page that will show you a little bit about Parse and how to get a very bare bones um, application up and running along with these two black boxes here. There won't be black boxes on yours. These are your client key and application ID which you will need in order to go through this tutorial so you need to find these on the Parse website um, once you have signed up and logged in and real quick a couple of other things about Parse they have some great documentation so I definitely recommend um, after you watch this tutorial uh, let's see I think I have it pulled up over here uh, no I don't but this is another good page parse.com slash tutorials slash Android push notifications this will teach you a lot of the same stuff but explain it in text if you'd like to be able to read it and reference back to it um, but they also do have some really good documentation along the left hand side of their page under Android and you can choose parse notifications or you can look at some of the other features that this parse.com service offers so that is the brief overview of parse.com for this specific tutorial you can get the court the um, source code off of github if you go to github.com slash foamy guy slash parse notification example um, so go ahead and go there download this source code get it imported into your eclipse i've already got it loaded up so let's jump over to there and see uh, what we have going actually you know what let's uh, go to the parse page first. Once you get signed up and logged into Parse, um, you should be able to have this top bar here that shows you some of the different sections of the Parse website. The section you want is Parse notifications. You won't have anything in this list here because you haven't sent any notifications yet. Um, I've already sent some obviously so I've got that put in. I'm gonna just go ahead, I've already got this application running uh, or installed rather on my emulator so I'm just gonna go ahead and real quick send a basic notification just so we can see what we're working with here let's say hello YouTube parse notification tutorial and we want to send it right now and we don't want it to ever expire for right now so we're gonna leave those the same Android clients only and go ahead and send and now if I pull up the emulator you can see we got the notification up here if we pull down the notification bar we can click on it and it will launch our Hello World activity. Not a lot going on here um, because this project is just to show you how to listen for those parse notifications and react to them. So now that you've seen it work, let's go ahead and dive into the code and see what you need to do in order to set this up. So the first thing, um, when you're using parse.com for notifications um, and some of the other services as well, but definitely for notifications, you have to have inside of your manifest all of these permissions right here. So internet, network state, receive boot, vibrate, wake lock. You have to have all of these notifications, uh, I'm sorry, permissions. You have to have all these permissions in order to receive the push notifications from parse.com. You also 
need to have, uh, if you want to use a custom push notification, which I'm going to show you how to do, um, you need to have a receiver, uh, which is a broadcast receiver declared in your manifest. Uh, whoops, got the log hat jumping over here. You need to have a receiver in order to receive custom notifications. If you don't want to use custom notifications, if you just want to use the basic ones like I just did a second ago, where you're only sending text, then you don't need to have this. Um, but if you want to send customized data, then you do need to have a custom broadcast receiver. The other things you need, you need to declare the parse uh, push service. And then you also need to declare for the basic push notifications this receiver right here, com.parse.parseBroadcastReceiver. Um, this is for the, again, the basic push notifications. So you need to have this no matter what. Um, and then this one up here is for the custom push notifications. So you only need that if you're going to be pushing custom data. That's the end of the manifest. So you need to make sure you have all of that stuff. Um, obviously, you need to have your parse uh, library jar file inside your libs, and you need to hook that up on your build path. And let's go ahead and dive into some of the class files here. So we have parse application, extends application, and you can see we hooked this up in the manifest. If I jump back here real quick, Android name, uh, com dot make my Android app parse notification example parse application. So that's uh, what's going to apply this application file to our project and inside of here you need to put parse.initialize uh, pass it a context and pass it a application ID and a client key um, so these are stored inside the keys file mine are blank right here just so that you guys can't see my keys because you're supposed to keep this stuff private um, so you will need to get your own keys from the parse.com website and fill them in inside this keys file and then inside your application, you can make reference to them when you call parse.initialize. The other thing you need to do, push service.setDefault push callback, and you pass it a context and the activity class that you want to launch when the user clicks on the default notification. So this only applies to the default notification if you send text only, not custom data. Um, so this is, again, defining which activity is going to open up when the user clicks on that notification. And the very last thing you need, parse installation .get current installation save in background, just to save um, these initial settings here. So that's it for the application file. And you've already seen the default notification work. Um, so in order to get that default notification to work, that's yeah, all you need is all the things that I've gone over so far, the application file, all those permissions in your manifest, that's all you need in order to get the default uh, push notifications working. And again, real quick, just so you can see that, I will send one more. And let's say, hello, go ahead and send, launch our, and you can see uh, the emulator here, we got our default notification again. So in the default notification, you can send text only. And when you click it, it will open up whichever uh, app or whichever activity you specified um, when you initialized the push notification service for parse. So now let's get into something a little bit more fun with custom receivers. So this would be if you don't want to just send raw text, you want to actually send some customized data. So when you do that, you need to have your own broadcast receiver. I've called mine parse receiver. And what you need to do is define an onReceive method. Oh, important to note as well, in your manifest, when you declare this receiver, you have to declare it with an action name. And whatever action name you use here, uh, I've got a kind of a long one here. Um, and you, you may, if you're going to use this in a real application, um, you may take note to use a shorter action string here. Um, it's not required that you use your package name, but it is recommended on Android. Uh, if you're going to be declaring a custom action for receivers that you put your package name in there just to make sure that nobody else uses the same um, action string as you. Um, but you are limited on the number of characters that you can send from parse.com. So if you don't use an action string that's this long, that gives you all the more characters that you can use for your actual data. Um, so just make note that whatever action you put here in your Android manifest, for the broadcast receiver, you're going to have to enter that onto the parse notification um, panel when you want to go and send a notification. So let's jump back to the receiver real quick. And um, inside of our on receive method, so this is the method that's going to get called whenever the parse service sends out a notification. So first thing we did, just log, you know, sanity check, make sure that we got our, um, we got our callback right. 
and then we have a try catch block inside there we are going to get the action string and we are going to get the channel string channels i'm not going to go into too much but channels um, just a quick overview it gives you the ability to split up your push notifications so like if you only want them to go to certain people um, then you can specify a channel you register those people for that channel and then those will be the only ones to receive that particular push notification I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial but that's how you can use that and you can find out more on the parse.com documentation um, when you send custom data through parse notifications, you send them as JSON data. So in order to parse that, you can use these Java objects for JSON object. And we will say J uh, JSON object, JSON equals new JSON object. And we will pull it out of the intent that we got passed. So intent.getextras.getString com.parse.data. So that will pull out our JSON object. Um, we'll go ahead and log the action and the channel that we got. We will create an iterator so that we can go through the JSON data. And then we just have a simple while loop here. While the iterator has next, we will pull out the current key from the JSON data. And then we will log the current um, value. So we pull out the key first, and then we say log.debug we will put the key into the log and we will also put the data into the log so this doesn't actually do anything uh, with the data but it does uh, serve as an example just to show that you can send complex uh, data formats and data types through json um, to your broadcast receiver and then once you get to here and you pull it out of your json object you can do whatever you want with it in this case we're just going to log it so that i can show you how it works um, but obviously in you know the real life world you probably would do something more fancy with that data when once you pull it out um, so the last thing is when you create a custom push notification the parse library will not um, serve the notification for you the actual notification that goes up in the notification bar so if you want your uh, if you want that to actually have a notification for your user you need to do that yourself so here I've created that notification and real quick I've just got a bitmap for the icon and we again we're gonna set right here which activity is gonna launch we're gonna say the same one main activity and then we create the actual notification object using the notification APIs in the builder. So we'll set the title, push received. Um, we'll set the context, or no, no, the content text as uh, this string right here, message, which actually did come out of our JSON object up here. So just to show you kind of a, a, a very basic example of what you can do with this stuff is once you pull that data out of your JSON object, we're going to use it for the text inside of our notification. We will set the icon, uh, the small icon, the large icon, and we will set the content intent, which is gonna be which activity opens up. Again, we declared that intent right here. And then we will set the auto cancel to true um, so that when the user taps on it, it goes away. We'll say build, and then we will send the notification. And that is gonna be it for this custom receiver. So let's go ahead and see it in action here. So I'm gonna pull up the emulator and actually first I've got some just dummy JSON data right here so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and we'll go back to the parse notification dashboard send a new push when you want to send custom data you will flip this to the JSON uh, on this little switch down here instead of just a plain message I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my data and this is just uh, any kind of JSON. So whatever you can format as JSON data, you can do here. Important to note, you need to have uh, one of your key value pairs needs to be this string right here, action, and it needs to match the action from your broadcast receiver. Um, so you have to put that inside this custom notification here. So that's what I was saying. Since you are limited on the number of characters, if your action string is not a million characters long like mine, then you can fit more actual data inside your JSON. Um, so there is the JSON and we can go ahead. We're still going to send it for right now. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could choose a specific time. You could choose an expiration time. Um, you could choose segment here. This is where you would set up your channels if you wanted to only send it to a subset of users. I'm just going to go ahead and send it to everyone. And let me make sure we have the log cat ready here. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. And now we will send it. So go ahead and send notification. Let's check out the emulator. You can see we received it. There's our icon. 
pull it down, hello world, that is the custom string that we actually pulled out of the JSON object. And you can see that in the logcat, we have all of these values that we sent through the JSON data. So we have our string, hello world, um, we have the action, we have a Boolean that was set to true, a number, one, two, three, um, an object that held, looks like an array of characters, uh, or a map of characters actually, not an array, a map, and then we have um, null, got passed through as null, and then we also have an array with the ints one, two, and three in it. So this just is a quick example to show you that you can send any kind of data type that you want, uh, as long as you can format it as JSON. And again, um, you just stick that right into the uh, text box here on the parse notification page. You just dump your raw JSON text right into there. It will come through to your application. And just to show you, if you click on it, it will open up whatever activity you had. Uh, mine was main activity, which I think doesn't actually have anything in it except for a basic activity. Yep, nothing in there. Um, but obviously this could launch your whatever activity you wanted. You set it inside your receiver um, or inside the manifest in the case of the default push notification. Um, so that's pretty much it for the parse notifications. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would encourage you to uh, upvote it uh, or like it rather, and uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I do post these videos occasionally, not as often as I might like, but uh, there'll be some more cool ones coming up here. So thanks for watching guys. And uh, we will see you next time.